Hi, uh, it's Yuli here from SSW. We're here in the SSW TV studio at NDC Sydney, and I'm here again with my favorite man, Richard Campbell. Good to see you, friend. You too. We did a talk three years ago mm -hmm. on the Artemis program, the Artemis missions. Yeah, and, and well, a whole bunch of space stuff. A whole bunch of space stuff, and it was great. We took about 45 minutes for that one, but we're going to do a quick update now. Okay to see where we're up to three years later, how has it all gone? So you talk about the Artemis rocket specifically? Yeah. So it's been a tough couple of months for the Artemis rocket. They finally did get it assembled. Uh, it's been 10 years in the making, right? I mean, this is all former space shuttle technology, basically assembled into a 100 ton lift rocket. The shuttle weighed about 100 tons. And so getting rid of shuttle meant, hey, you got about 100 ton lift and they've put the Orion capsule on top of it. It's still the early stages of that particular rocket design. There's more advanced models they'd like to make. This particular rocket is the first of them. And so it's been gone through a tremendous amount of testing. And we're now in the phase where it's actually at Cape Kennedy on the, uh, on the Space Coast. And they've been taking it from the vehicle assembly building up to the pad and have been running some tests on it. And many of those tests can only happen at the pad, but then often the repairs have to happen in the vehicle assembly building. So they've been going back and forth. And each one of those runs is a day mm -hmm. and a lot of money. You know, it's a very, very heavy rocket. There, there's conversations about they're damaging the crawlers, moving this rocket back and forth. And the problems have been the typical problems for a Hydrolox rocket, a rocket that uses both liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for its propellant. Liquid hydrogen is a very, very difficult fuel to work with. And so they've had a lot of leak problems and small assembly issues and so forth. And it's taken a lot of time. And there's a subtle thing that's going on. That particular tank set, and it's the only one that exists right now. There's another tank set that will be ready for the next Artemis mission, which is like two years from now. It can only take so many pressurization, depressurization cycles. It was rated for 22. So I've been trying to keep track of all of the different times it's been pressurized and depressurized it, it, since it was built, which was more than two years ago. So they pressurized it a couple of times at the, uh, when they built the tanks. It got pressurized seven or eight times when they were testing it with the engines at the McCod facility in Louisiana or Mississippi. And now it's been pressurized several times on the pad. So I think they're running out of pressurizations. I think they're down to like the last four or five of them before they fly. So the last attempt to launch was at the end of September and they had a serious hydrogen leak again. This may have been an operator error because they were tinkering with the uh, procedures for getting ready to fly and uh, may have overpressurized the line and damaged some seals. So they were able to repair those seals on the pad and then test that they were getting good pressurization. And then uh, Hurricane Ian was coming. So they decided to take the rocket assembly back into the VAB to protect it. Smart. But that meant that they lost their window in September. The mission is to fly out around the moon and do several orbits of the moon before coming back for a re-entry. There are only certain times each month that that's possible. So the next window opens from uh, about November 12th to the 27th, somewhere in there. So we're recording this now in October. Uh, so we're about a month away from them being able to attempt to fly again. And this this launch, you said it's to go up and go around Unmanned, and come back again? Unmanned, just a test flight to, to validate the rocket flying for the very first time and um, Orion flying arguably for the second time. Right. There was another test mission for Orion, but this would be a real all-up test of Orion. Everything except really the life support system. So they want to measure, they will have dummies in the vehicle. They want to measure radiation dosages. Uh, they do want to practice the maneuvering with the, with the, uh, the service module to modify orbits around the moon and then actually do a re-entry at speed. And so once that has successfully happened. Yes. What will the next step be? After Ar that? Artemis 2 would be a manned mission to the moon, but not landing, just going into orbit and having people around the moon again and then return them. Are they setting up any part of Gateway or anything like that yet? So there's a couple of components of Gateway that are being built right now. There is one of the habitation modules under construction. It's very much like the International Space Station and the maneuvering unit. So this is one of the Maxar units, which was originally specified, we talked about this three years ago, originally specified for the asteroid redirect mission. It's one of the most powerful Hall effect thrusters systems ever built. Uh, and that's one of the distinctions with the station, with the gateway station, is it will have to do a fair bit of its own station keeping. It's meant to be a man-tended space station, so it will go without people for an extended period of time. Something the International Space Station cannot do. They're not people to maintain the International Space Station pretty much all of the time. We would lose control of it. And it, and all reboosting of the International Space Station is done by cargo vessels. 
typically the progress uh, missions that are done by Russia reboost the station to keep it in orbit. So one of the goals in, at Gateway, with it being unmanned, is that it should be able to do its own reduce, reboost and maneuvering. And that's what those modules are for. So those parts are being built. They nominally are expected to fly on their own Artemis missions, the later ones. Um, but there is some conversation of that there could be some alternatives like uh, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy could be capable of lifting some of those components. But still some work to be done there. We, there are ways away. Okay. While we're on the moon, mm -hmm. uh, Pathfinder, which was originally a Martian mission or plan. Or there was a mission called back in 1997 called Pathfinder that was a, a new way to go to Mars with the little drone that was showed up in the movie The Martian and so yeah. forth. Um, but Pathfinder missions in general are proving concepts. So uh, our neighbors just to the east here, the New Zealand, uh, New Zealand with the Electron rocket, they lifted a, a microsat, a CubeSat called they're calling Pathfinder that has been traveling to the moon ever since. It's had a bunch of problems. They lost control of it a couple of times. They're having some software issues, but they've got control of it again. But its job, what it's validating, is the near rectilinear halo orbit that they want to put Gateway into. So we always think about in you know Star Trek land, an orbit around a body is just going circular around like this, right? And then, and that's not how they want to orbit the moon. The moon is very irregular gravitationally. It's very difficult to orbit low to it that way. And so to create a more stable orbit for the space station, they're going to do this very oblique uh, orbit. So it's going to pass close over the North Pole and then far down south. It's about a seven day orbit in total to get back to that same point, but six days out of to have a view of the South Pole. So part of the design of that orbit, so they have a lot of time looking at the South Pole, which is where we want to do most of our research. And at the same time, it's very gravitationally stable. It's also always in view of the Earth and almost always in view of the Sun. So the power systems for the station are simpler. Communications are simpler. It's a really well-planned orbit, but they've never put anything in that orbit before. So getting this little CubeSat is doing the pathfinding to actually see how stable that orbit and how much perturbation happens to it and how well they can communicate with it. So right. it's progress. All right. Is there a rover going to the moon as well? There are a bunch of rover missions specified to help identify locations for ice and to actually explore landing sites to get more. We have very good maps of the moon now because of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and some others. Uh, we need even better. And so putting uh, rovers down uh, on the South Pole in the areas where we think we want people to go and having them explore the landing increase will help us tune what's the best site where are we going to be close to enough sunshine to collect solar power and enough darkness that there's ice for us to extract and experiment with? And those are pretty precise things to do. So throwing a few rovers down is probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah. And we've never landed anything on a cell pole before. So we should start with like lower impact devices. Sure. All right, excellent. Well, thank you very much for that. You bet. All right, so that's Richard Campbell and Ulysses from SSW TV. Thank you very much.